Hello and welcome back to RCM Model Reviews. Today, the answer to a question I've actually wondered for quite some time, but I've never bothered to check. In theory, in theory, if you use a higher amperage speed controller, then you should get a little bit more power out of your motor because the higher amp speed controllers have uh, devices or more devices, which means that they're on state. That's the resistance of the controller itself is lower than a lower current controller, which doesn't carry as much current. So in theory, um, I'm just using the Hobby King 12 amp ESC here, the Afro 12 amp ESC. I've got the Quantum 2204-2300kV motor with a 5.3 prop and I've got the Turnergy th thrust measuring stand which I'll turn on, go on, there you go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind this right out, just see what sort of thrust levels we get out of it and what sort of power we draw in the process and then um, we'll change speed controllers, we'll change to the 20 amp afro speed controller and it's, let's see what happens so let's wind it up first of all in the current configuration look at the numbers so here we go we're all set up again exactly the same motor exactly the same propeller same battery same power meter this is an afro 20 amp esc that i've reflashed to bl heli that's why it has a different uh, or doesn't have the normal heat shrink on it i'm going to wind her up and just see what sort of figures we get out of this baby see if that different esc makes any difference oops better get the oh, i've got the meter banging on there just move this around a bit so we get a nice clean zero starting figure here we go And if you're wondering, yes, I did recal the speed controller so that it's working over the full range, not just uh, tapping out at full throttle. Okay, here we go. Same set up again, except I'm using the Rotor Geeks 12 amp ESC. And we'll see if that works any different. See whether it's actually just the, the brand makes a difference. Well, there you go, you can see why I like the Rotor Geeks ESCs, that's actually putting out more power. Okay, so what do we learn from that? Well, not a lot really, except that ESCs do have an effect on motor performance. Uh, obviously the Afro ESC, the 12 amp one, that was called of a baseline. The 20 amp Afro ESC, now it was flashed with the BL Heli software, but that didn't seem to make much difference. It was pretty much the same, there wasn't a lot of difference. However, the Rotor Geeks 12 amp ESC certainly um, enabled us to get more power out of that particular motor prop battery combination which is really interesting now just to make sure I, I'll, I'll reiterate i did a full recal of all the escs before i tested them so it wasn't a case of the calibration being out it was um i did the full range on the servo tester and made sure they were all calibrated properly so uh, interesting stuff now i've got a lot of stuff on escs coming up i've got my theory stuff i did on the whiteboard a while ago and uh, I'm going to go through how ESCs work. I'm also going to look at the factors that make a good ESC and make a bad ESC and how important is software and you know what's this um, NFET and PFET and all the sort of rubbish that you've heard about. Try and do a sort of a, a primer series and, a, and a, then an in-depth series to ESCs that when you're looking at putting an ESC in your model, be it a multi-rotor or, there goes my phone, multi-rotor or a, uh, a fixed wing or an EDF or anything like that, you'll be able to look at the series that I'm going to do and decide for yourself which is the best of all the options on the market because I'm going to be testing a lot of them too. Got those um, Rotor Geeks ESCs here and I've been running them through the test. Another thing I'll be looking at is, is one shot really a big deal? Does it make a big difference? Is it going to enable you to get more power out of your motors? Will a one shot ESC give you a longer battery life? What's it going to do for you? So heaps and heaps of stuff on ESCs coming up soon. And of course the motor shootouts that are coming up as well. So stay tuned, a lot of stuff to come. Now, if I've forgotten anything, I will put it in the description of the video. A lot of people say, why didn't you do this? And then I say, read the description. I did that, like the, uh, the tests I did on the Multistar and the Quantum Motors. I did put the tabled, tabled results in the description. A lot of people didn't read the description, so they were asking, why don't you put it in a table? Well, I did. And the full range of those motor tests will be coming up fairly shortly. And I'll do a big spreadsheet so you can see, compare all the different factors across the different motors and decide which one is best for you. Now, um, in the meantime, it's time for me, of course, to get back to the bench. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. See you soon.